One way or another, I could always get you to do what I wanted. That's why I always got to be the cowboy, and, well, you had to be the Indian. Did I ever let you be the cowboy? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe that's why you grew up to be such a great Indian. Get you home early for once. Come on, JJ, let's go. Bad idea. Don't worry about it, just go. Come on, you getting in? Nah, I'm gonna walk home. You sure? Air will do me good. Hey, make sure this elder gets home safe and sound. Get out of here. <laughs> I'll see you back at the office. All right, man. Take care of yourself, huh? Don't worry about me there, big brother. How you doing, Haas? Yeah, just like I thought. JJ? Next door neighbor of mine. I can walk out the front door. She got her eyes all over me. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. Can't. Everyone knows chicks just go for men in uniform. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Hey, 
Stop! So, what was your little powwow buddy wearing? Huh? What was he wearing? My partner's got one male juvenile, approximately 16 years of age. Head down, head down. Here you go. Zero two. Do you have any further description on the second one other than dark clothing? Got him. He's headed toward Logan, north toward the park. Native male, approximately 18. Gray jacket and jeans. I'll go, Rob. No, no, I'll go. Little prick just got me going. <laughs> Police! Hold it right there! Tonight, huh? Going home? Yeah, man, I'm going home. Yeah. Second suspect in custody, native male, 18, jeans, gray jacket, over. Hey! Hey, yeah! Right there. Hang on. Hey! Sir! Buddy, I want to see some ID. I don't have to show you my freaking ID. I asked you for some ID. Billy. You know, I want my case of beer back, eh? Oh! Oh! Very niggers. You can't even walk. What's the matter with you guys? Rob? Rob? Where are you at, Rob? I'm, uh... I'm just west of Wings. I'm gonna need my partner here. No, don't! don't. And I'm also going to need an ambulance. Oh, please. This isn't a goddamn lounge. Sorry, Inspector. <laughs> Fraser, get out of there. Hose it down. Well, hose it down. I didn't just got here. All right, sun comes up in two hours. I want you all out of here in one. Pick that up, you. JJ. Shot him? He's dead, Harry.
One bullet right to the heart. He had to be shot in the operating room for us to have a chance to save him. Hmm. John Joseph Harper. Indian card. Driver's license. Bunch of stuff. The Northern Lakes Tribal Council agenda. Is he on the council? Shit. Executive director. Letter from his wife. Or girlfriend. Chief with some problems. All right, let's pack this yeah. up. You know, it's a nightmare. I don't, I mean, I don't even know what to say. You know, suddenly there's this, this, this dead guy there. I can only imagine. No, you can't. You know, so um, don't even try, okay? Rob, it's okay, just don't worry about the folding, all right? You know, my dad uh, used to say that there's two kinds of people. Cops and assholes. I don't gotta show you nothing. So I says, well, excuse me. So I grab his arm like, hey, fella, hold on. Well, he just turns around and shoves me. I, I, I'm going down, I grab him, and he comes down on top of me. And then there's the, and there's the struggle, okay? I felt a tug at my hip. And he gets my gun out, and then, Could have just as easily been me down there in that slam. Excuse me, officers. There was a letter in my brother's pocket, in his wallet. It was a personal letter from his wife. We'd like it back. I can't say whether such a letter was found, but everything on your brother's person at the time of his death would be considered evidence. Look, just get it back for us, okay? Let's see what we can do. Get it back. It's the least you could do after what your friend did. <sighs> Mr. Woods, we don't have all the details yet, but it seems that a struggle did occur. All we know, and all we care about right now, is that one of you shot my brother.
No way I'm moving to the city. I'm not asking you to live there, just stay a couple of years. They don't like Indians like me in the city. Remember what happened on the last trip? We need somebody to go to bat for us. People listen to you, JJ. They trust you. I don't want Lois and the kids down there. It's not good for them. Can't always do what you want to do, John Joseph. Come on, JJ. It'll be a breeze. You just be doing what you always do, what you shoot your mouth off. <laughs> Except this time, you might do some good. Executive director, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Do I get a limo? <laughs> The crime scene was a joke. We brought the hoses in to wash it down like two hours after the fact. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know, I know. The boy screwed up. I suppose they had 20 pairs of boots walk through the evidence. <laughs> and we were sitting down there on the sidewalk on Logan, beside two pools of blood the size of that table over there. Ross is our only witness. He's a mess. You know he was a chief, eh? What? Mm. Mm. Council card in his pocket. Huh? That's all we need. Sir, want me to proceed with Prince on this? Well, you haven't already? You've had a day. Well, we knew whose gun it was who had it in their hands. All right, who's touched it besides Constable Cross? Uh, myself, a couple of the constables, and Harper, of course. Oh, of course. But we'd need Prince actually showing that, wouldn't we? Oh, forget it. Anything else I don't want to know about? No. So how's Cross holding up, anyway? Well, he's your basic screwed-up mess, but, you know... But Chief! And we can get the speed. Mm, a couple of headaches. I'll take care of it. Welcome back, by the way. Yeah, thanks. The boy Cross is pretty broken up. Yeah, I heard. Guy was a chief up north. Chief Stephen, sir, there is a Mr. Sinclair reporter from the Free Press waiting to speak with you. Already? Shoot the chief. Gordon! How goes it? I was hoping to ask you the same. Well, I'll be honest with you. I've had better starts to my day. Come on in. I don't know what to tell you, Gord. If you want me to speculate, I guess the glasses were buried deeper in the snow and only revealed by subsequent melting. And the canvassing of witnesses? How do you mean? I dropped by six homes in the immediate vicinity, talked to three people. None of them have been questioned by police. Well, I'll look into that. I know a number of people were questioned right after the incident. Sometimes people aren't home when we call. Four, five, six a.m.? Well... But the investigation continues. Oh, there's always little pieces to clear up, certainly. Little pieces. Excuse me, sir. They're ready. Thanks. Well, thanks for your time, Chief. Time for it anytime. Catch you later. A press photographer found Harper's glasses in the snow a couple of yards from the blood. We had a dozen guys down there. I don't know what to tell you. Harper did provoke. It's a story we're getting across. And you buy it? He's one of our guys, huh? Keep me posted. Here we go. Uh, sir, Chief, excuse me. On the night of March 9th, 1988, 2.40 a.m., an officer approached Mr. John Joseph Harper and asked him for identification. Harper refused and walked away. The officer took hold of Harper by his right arm. At this time, Harper turned to face him and pushed the officer with both hands on the shoulders. The officer lost his balance and fell backward onto the ground. As he fell, he grabbed Harper by both arms and he fell on top of the officer. Oh yeah, that sounds plausible. As the officer attempted to push Harper back, Harper reached down and grabbed at the butt of the officer's service revolver. In the ensuing struggle, the revolver came free from the holster. What's a safety strap doing? And the officer managed to hold the butt while Harper pulled on the barrel of the weapon and it discharged. The Firearms Review Board has concluded that the death was precipitated by the assault on the officer by Mr. Harper. 
Senior Crown Attorney Bruce Miller has found no evidence of a criminal offense. I concur. And no charges will be laid. Thank you. This is bullshit. So you disagree with their conclusions? It's a lot of conclusions in 36 hours, don't you think? You think the charges should be laid? Of course. They're trying to sweep this under the rug. Someone was saying JJ caused his own death. Did you get any other, you have any other comments? Did you like to... I'm telling you, Joe, those pigs were just looking for someone to hassle. Why, JJ? Why would they do that? Because he was Indian, that's why. I saw them cruising around last night. I don't know, Aaron. Cops are always cruising around. I don't know. They murdered him, Joe. I know it. God, it's the nuts. Magumogespitsian <laughs> Wouldn't do me any good. What my wall, smugglers with the wall and the bent open kiss me off the open. Me and JJ were in Brandon, eh? All native hockey tournament. JJ used to play hockey. He used to play for the Tomahawks. He's a real good hockey player. Anyways, we're sitting in the dressing room. We hear this noise down the hallway. The door just flies open. JJ comes in. He says, hey, you guys, you guys got to help me. You know, he's always getting us into trouble, eh? Always trying to bail him out. He says, oh, man, what'd you do now? He says, well, I was hitting on some of these girls from the res. It's this other res, eh? And I guess all the guys got just pissed at him, eh? And we hear this rumble coming down the hallway, eh? I guess all the guys were chasing him. So he says, man, you guys got to help me out, you know? So I say, OK, sure, we'll help you out. So we go to the door, about to jump out, eh? JJ jumps out. We shut the door on him. We don't let him back in. <laughs> oh, man. You should have seen him on the ice. Helmet's crooked because he's got this big honking shiner on, eh? <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> didn't talk to us for a long time after that. <laughs> well, we got to do something. We got to get us a lawyer. Yeah. I know someone we can use. You trust this guy? As far as I can throw him. I figure I can throw him pretty far. And what did he tell you? I made a special note of what Constable Cross said. What do you mean special? What gave you the idea what he said was special? But what you mean to say is you wrote it down. I wrote it down, yes, sir. Okay, go on. Now, what did he say? He said, and I quote, I approached him. Him being? Harper, the victim. J.J. Harper. Constable Cross said, quote, I asked him for ID. He hit me, knocked me down, and went for my gun. It came out, and I shot him. I shot him? He got shot. Just be clear and don't get flustered. Don't try to qualify your statements unless you're asked to. Okay, Mark. You'll do fine. Remember, Ken, it's just an inquest. Out of which charges could still come. Inspector? Yeah? We got a call from a witness, a Mike Timchuk. He says he was near Logan around the time of the shooting. Did he witness the actual shooting itself? No, but he says he saw an officer run past probably moments prior. Um, tell him thanks. We'll call him if we need him. And uh, send Cross in. Constable Cross isn't here, sir. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can I see, can I see some ID, sir? Can I? I see some ID? Can I? May I see some, can I see some ID? No. <laughs> can I, can I, can I, can I see some ID? Please present now. Can I see some ID, sir? I was not in my trouble. I'd go easy if I were you, Rob. Hey, yeah, boss. I was just... Uh... We were expecting you in today. For what? Prep for the inquest. Oh! Oh, yeah! Yeah, oh, um... I was just, uh... You know, I was going over a few things myself. Well, you get your head straight, son. You come into work tomorrow sober. Yeah, I was just... Okay. family at the inquest well, as a rule i don't do inquests uh, there are no formal charges against the officer cop shot jj that's pretty clear well certainly to us but an inquest isn't like a trial i'm restricted as to how aggressively i can question like what that cop was doing running around pointing his gun at everyone the police enjoy how shall i put this a certain latitude when it comes to what's considered appropriate use of a firearm and basically the officer just has to claim he feared for his life then he'll just lie i would expect so barring him being a uniquely moral specimen. Well, as I remember the coverage, there was reference to a struggle. Yeah, a struggle not to get shot. Can the inquest charge Cross? No, but it can recommend charges to the Attorney General. Based on evidence you bring out. <laughs> okay, Joe. Thanks, Harvey. Don't get your hopes up. You never do. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Second suspect's jacket, you've got gray here. Yes, sir. But I thought the first description went out as black. Native guy, black jacket, 20s. The first? Yeah, the first description went out as 
It was black, but after we got a good look at him, the uh, description was revised to gray. Yeah. Suspect's jacket turned out to be gray. Yeah, right. It turned out to be gray. But the actual first description was black. So the guy you were looking for, you were told, was an Indian wearing a black jacket, right? So when Constable Cross approached Harper, he was approaching an Indian wearing a black jacket. An Indian meeting the initial description, yeah? Right? So he, he shoves me. I start to fall. I grab his sleeves and I go down on my back. Right? And he comes down right on top of me, except for me holding him off because I got my left foot in his chest. He reaches down. Now, I don't know this exactly at the moment, but I feel it tugging at my hip. And then the gun comes out, right? I guess into my hand mostly, but he's got the barrel and he's pulling on it and, and I can feel my grip loosening. I can feel it loosening and then, and then bang. Rob, 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 you can get off the floor now. Yep, come on, up again. That's good. Inspector Delsey, you know Crown Attorney Morton? No, of course, hey, Bill. Hey, Ken, we're just reviewing the fight. Right, uh, look, um, no offense, but uh, I don't think this sort of display is gonna help. You realize I have to be impartial. And we all want to hear the constable's version of events, since he's the only witness. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm not saying don't be impartial. I, uh, I think I'm talking about respect for the uniform. I mean, if he's forced to roll around on the floor like that... No one forced him, Ken. He suggested he come. And I would suggest that his judgment right now is not at its best. That's my suggestion. Me shooting my mouth off before. Why don't you let me prove it? Farmers, it's been a two day. Well, day. Nothing on as usual. Wait till I get my cable. <sighs> oh, nice. Hey, I thought oh. you were going home. No. Come on. Well, You're not sleeping I, I... here. No, no, I'm hungry. Come on. I don't know how your wife puts up with you. Mm. So you're worried about the inquest? What's to worry? But all your guys on that stand. Mm. You gotta get a new TV. His blood alcohol level was 2.2. Which is high. Almost three times the legal limit for driving usually meaning someone who's belligerent. Your Honor, that conclusion is hardly warranted. Continue. Belligerent. A word Constable Cross happened to use in his notes to describe J.J. Harper's presentation. Belligerent. Someone who may verbally or even physically attack a person. Yes, sir. Mr. Pollock. So, although Harper's corpse showed abrasions due to falling after having been shot, there were no signs of any physical struggle, let alone one of life and death proportion. No. Now, presuming there was a fight over the revolver, might one assume the possibility of skin from either man under his fingernails, skin from his adversary? It's not uncommon. Were any such skin samples found? No fingernail scrapings were done. I see. On either man? No. Was there any gunpowder residue on Harper's hands? I mean, given that Constable Cross's statement would suggest that Harper's hand was holding the barrel during the shooting. No. Were Harper's fingerprints on the gun? As it uh, turns out, the gun was not dusted for prints uh, at the time. The gun was not printed? Not until... The gun was not printed? Mr. Pollock resulting in what at the time when the gun was finally printed? The single print discovered was that of an RCMP technician. Uh -huh. 
And then Harper took hold of your right hand, which the gun was in, and started to yank the barrel. No. I'm going by your statement, sir. Then Harper, then Harper took hold of my right hand, which the gun was in, and started to yank on the barrel. Is that correct? Yes. So how did the gun get into your right hand? I don't know. With the gun in your right hand, Harper is still over you. Is that correct? He's in position over you, suspended, sort of, while you're still on the ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't understand. You're stating that I'm holding the gun. Based on your statement, sir. No, you are not. Because that is not how it is in the statement. The gun is in your right hand. I wound up with the gun in my right hand. I wound up with the gun in my right hand. He wound up with the gun in his right hand, which means the gun is in his right hand. That's not how it is in the statement. <sighs> Mr. Pollock, may I remind you that this is an inquest, not a trial? Absolutely, Your Honor. This is Harvey. It's a goddamn three-ring circus, and I don't like it. It's a strategy, Harry. They're trying to wear us down, get us frustrated. It's working. No, no, not at all. Not at all, guys. Relax. It's, it's part of the show. Part of the show. Whatever you say. Um, we were driving into town, me and my boyfriend, Randy Houston, and uh, his friend, Larry York. Had you been drinking? No, uh, me and Randy hadn't. But Larry, he was hammered. What did you see? Well, we were heading west on Logan when I saw a cop car ahead of us. Shit, don't us! Slow down! It's the beer. Randy, look out! Woo! <laughs> it's a cop car Woo! Right. Ms. Morissette, isn't it possible that what you saw in that officer's hand was a two-way radio? No, it was a gun. That's the one thing I was sure of. I told my mom as soon as I got home. I said that there was this officer and he was running by with a gun. Besides, no one aims a radio. She was great. I was worried about her, but she nailed it. Yeah, except she's Indian. All your witnesses are Indians. Harry, who cares what color? She blew them away. Constable Cross. James Harper was hoping he could talk with you. What? James, what? J.J. Harper's father. Back off, pal. We don't need more irritation. He lost one son. He doesn't want to lose another constable. I'm not... What? What do you mean, son? I've never even... He's waiting for you at Northern Lakes. He wants to forgive you. Listen, friend, a little advice. We aren't the guys you want to harass. I'm not harassing anyone. I'm making him an offer. Not interested. It's my father's offer. Sure as hell ain't mine. All I remember is these part words like the male cop. When he gets back into the car, he goes to the female cop. I happened to reach for my gun, pulled the trigger, and it went off. Which isn't consistent with uh, what you said in your statement with the uh, investigating detectives. In that, you said uh, the male officer had said, and I'm quoting, um, he had pushed the guy, the guy had grabbed his gun, and he shot him. The officer was upset. He was questioning aloud why the male had to wrestle with him. I never said that. Questioning aloud? That's, that's not how I talk. <laughs> Please. And what happened then? The male cop got out, goes to the, the older cop. And the older guy goes, I want to talk to you first. And what did he goes then? I couldn't hear. They were standing outside, eh? The car door was closed. Then the younger cop gets back in, and the older cop opens the door, and the older cop says, say the gun went off accidentally. Uh, sorry, can, can we stop here a moment? Um, as I understand, your statement was... Uh, the older man said, see, the gun went off accidentally. Say. Not see. No, say. Say, say the gun say went off accidentally. 
It seems you can't remember exactly what people were saying. Objection. He's saying what he heard, whether or not it was copied down correctly. Mr. Pollock. He's leading the witness constantly, this Your Honor. This is just an inquiry, Mr. Pollock. Well, then do it right. It is being done right. Please. An inquest is for clarification, not for this antagonistic behavior. We'll recess here. allowed in here. Turn that off. You're not allowed to film the exhibits. It's a public courtroom and private exhibits. Bastards. Mrs. Harper's letter goes on to say, each time you drink, it drives us further apart and makes it seem easier to leave. Hey, Police Association, what's your reaction to the revelations in the Harper letter publicized today? Well, for us, it reinforces our client's claim of the difficulty of dealing with Mr. Harper on March 9th, specifically his actions and attitudes while under the influence of alcohol. Excuse me. You know what? You don't know nothing about my brother. Get that thing out of my face. promised me Lois's letter wouldn't go public. That's what they promised me. I know what they're doing. They're trying to make him look like a violent drunk. It's because they're scared, Harry. It's obvious. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but I think we're looking at charges, criminal negligence, maybe manslaughter. I find neither the allegations of racial slurs on the part of the officers, nor the allegations of drawn revolvers as credible. In conclusion, despite certain shortcomings in the area of police investigation, it is my view that the shooting occurred as a result of the deceased pushing down the officer and then attempting to take his revolver. The officer's attempt to keep control of his gun is justified, and the ensuing shooting I find to be accidental. I therefore exonerate Constable Cross. No charges will be laid. This inquest is concluded. Thanks. Your response, Mr. Wood? So that was it. For them, you were just one more dead Indian.
Get that Once record in. Ready? Champion, ladies and gentlemen. Come it, come it. Come it up. 6.5. 6.5. That's not bad for an old guy. Let me show you how the you pros do it. Huh? You need a new watch. Yeah, here, you hold this. Ready? Hang on, hang on. Ready? I'm ready. Go. Go! Hey! Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Is it a gun? Or is it a radio? Or is it a radio looks like a gun? I'm telling you, man. You better horse you up your ass on that one. Put it away, man. I mean, when is a gun not a gun? It's when it's seen by an Indian man. Hey, hey, hey. There is nothing funny about what happened out there. Now put this thing away. Who are you gonna pay to get a drink around here? Come on! Party! <laughs> Your mom, Wanda, right? My mom. She used to be your mom. Excuse me. She changed her name. What's your name? Tom, right? Ed. It's Harry, okay? Harry. <laughs> yeah, that was my next guess. Don't act like you don't know me, man. I'm your fucking brother. Hey. Hey, I'm not your brother, all right? Recognize me. I never thought of myself as a leader when I was growing up. <laughs> Things change. And as you get older, you take responsibility for your own life. Mm -hmm. And it's just like our people. We need to take responsibility for our communities, our children, our elders. Mm. Self-government, that's what I'm about. Because how can we be responsible if we don't have the power we need to make the decisions that affect all of us every day? So, JJ, any last thoughts for the young people out there before we sign off? What goes around comes around. And don't let the bastards grind you down. And we all know who those bastards are, don't we? Anybody who disagrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> we good. I was on it. Only Jessica Keisha Bono. When I look back now, I think I took the easy path. I became the angry Indian while you did all the real work. You always said, listen to the elders, rely on ourselves. Don't let the bastards grind you down. I owed it to you to become a true warrior. The police have circled the paddy wagons on this one. The police officer is the only eyewitness.
And it's his story against one a dead man can't tell. You know what? I will. I won't let him get away with it. I'm tired of it. None of us were there, Harry. And we can't argue with the booze they found in JJ's blood. I've known Indians who will fight with a sidewalk. That's bullshit. JJ was killed because he's Indian. And he's not the only one. There's gonna be more. We can't let that happen. What we need is an inquiry. JJ's death is a part of a pattern of violence against us. You sit in the parliament, Elijah. What's it gonna take to get an inquiry started? After the Helen Benny Osborne case, that's what we were hoping for. I pushed the minister all I could, but I got nowhere. This time, there's an election coming up. Indians got you elected, Elijah. Indians gave the NDP four seats in the North. Your government hasn't done much for us so far. If they think they can win this without us this time, No, no, Jesus Christ. I just read it myself. What the hell does Cross think he's doing? A feature interview in a national publication? I'm writing an internal report, Herb. We need to establish procedures for dealing with officer-related investigations, or this type of thing is bound to happen again. I think we know what we're doing. We won the inquest, but that's it. Morale's down, public thinks we're a bunch of hoodlums. You're taking this way too personally, Ken. Go ahead and write the report if you want. In the meantime, I want this idiot on a leash. Okay. Rob. Rob, wake up. Ken's here. Okay. Okay. Can I get you a coffee or anything? I don't think so. I'm fine. Thanks. Oh. Hey, boss. Sorry, I'm sleeping. We need to talk. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, Lucy, you want anything? You want a drink or a... No, I'm fine, thanks. Except for... Uh, this? Oh, Christ, yeah, that. You know, mm. bastard took my words and turned them all around. I went to high school with that guy. You know, I just figured people had a right to know the truth. You know, all that stuff the papers were writing, suggesting cover-ups, all that shit. I mean, I was there. You know, I was in the middle of it. How do you wink at an Indian? Yeah, well, that was just something I heard, okay? I'm not saying I prescribed to that position. Blaming the police is like an alcoholic blaming the liquor store for being open late. What the hell were you thinking? Personally, you know, you know my record. You know I got no personal problems with the Indians. Otherwise, you'd see me in friction with them all the time, right? I mean, it's just something you say. You say it, and maybe you regret it for a sec, but only because you're speaking a disturbing truth. Rob. There are people who would cut you loose in a second. Now, I'm not one of them. But neither will I piggyback you through bullshit of your own making. Why don't you just stay home for a while? Wait, what, what am I gonna do? I don't know. I'd like to thank you all for coming out here today. And I'd also like to start by saying that I lost my brother, and I can't bring him back. So I'll be damned if I stand by and watch any more of us get shot down in cold blood by the police. The battle has just begun. This time, they shot the wrong Indian. I believe you're all familiar with our MLA, the Honorable Elijah Harper. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your demonstrations have succeeded in securing from the provincial government an inquiry into the violence against our people. What the Aboriginal Justice Inquiry will do is address the entire provincial justice system's treatment of Aboriginal people in Manitoba. hoping to get home, hoping not to be seen by the police because if they do, they know it's trouble. Oh, shit. Turn that back on. I wanted to see that. Oh, it's just that MLA spouting off. Spouting off, eh? Why? Because he's an Indian? Uh, no, because he's a politician. <laughs> the Aboriginal the last thing my voice needs another kick in the head. Yeah, don't be such a wuss. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I just made that up. You always end up holding the ball. Because everyone else drops, so that's why. I should go home. You said that an hour ago. How are your kids doing through all this? It's all going to hell. It'll be over soon. No, well, you don't get it. I could be called to testify. So you testify, be on TV. Yeah, but they could ask me things, you know. A couple of careers could go down. Hmm. Couple of careers. Yeah, imagine. All that over one dead Indian. Yes, me doesn't. What? Well, get him out of there. It's a big problem. Huh. <laughs> I don't know where to start. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, I'll see. I got these, um... Uh, oh, God, I got Indians. You got Indians? Yeah, I got Indians. They got the gum. A contract out. A hundred, maybe two hundred thousand. I've been ready. I've been ready. I've been waiting. But... I just get tired. I'm so tired. Where'd you get this? Oh, come on, lady. I'm the police. Rob? What? What? Rob, let me have a gun. Okay. Let's go. I'm tired. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. I'll have much more latitude this time, and I want to go after the guns. How they go after Indians with their guns drawn, I think that's key. This is about more than what happened to JJ. It's about all of us, all our people. We're finally going to be heard. We got to do this right. Yeah. <laughs> we have to go get my father's pipe. This, this plays right into their hands, Ken. I hope you haven't shown this to anyone else. It's not a public relations exercise, Herb. It's about building a better police force. You really think it's necessary? I didn't much like what I had to do to get our boys through that Harper case. You did your job. You're a good one at that. You and me, we didn't kill that Indian. And one of our guys did. In the course of duty for which we're responsible. New judges on this inquiry, they cooked up. Uh, who knows, we could be sitting with charges. You're being a bit excessive, Ken. If they put me on the stand... Why would they put you on the stand? Besides, I don't see how your def management of a very difficult case should in any way reflect negatively on you. Come on, Herb. One of the judges is native, the other's a bleeding heart. Cross is a goddamn basket case. If they put him on the stand... I've talked to our lawyers. In his fragile mental state, that seems increasingly unlikely. 
Your driver's here, sir. Yeah. What, uh, what time is my flight again? It's at 3.30. On my way. Flight? Albuquerque. Convention of Chiefs. I've got complete faith in you. I'm troubled you'd reject the submission from the province's chief psychiatrist. We didn't reject it. We took it under consideration. And while we acknowledge uh, Constable Cross's fragile emotional state, we feel he's competent to testify. The repercussions to his mental state can be catastrophic. As could the repercussions to this process. Mr. McGregor, we feel you may not be acting in the constable's best interest. We understand Constable Cross has expressed the desire to testify. Your stonewalling and various delays can only serve to prolong the process and heighten his anxiety. It's our decision that he will testify. Telling you, Spoony, I'm walking the friggin' plank here. The chief's sitting there going, walk on, my son. You got all into a nightmare, Ken. All you tried to do is clean up the mess. Yeah, like those judges will understand. You're not on the list. Well, not so far. <laughs> but they never even heard your name. <sighs> it's not gonna be good if I have to testify. Just a shot. What are you talking about? They can't prove anything. Yeah, but I can't deny that a few mistakes were made. A te pega los pegan. Amado ni pa macho. Como que es bichar. You said that two years ago. I was lying then. Harry, my pipe always brings out the truth. It's the Superman of pipes. The Superman of pipes. Did you or Joe ever talk to that policeman? No. We tried to, but they stonewalled us. Guess they don't know the danger he's in. Fellas got to know. A wound like that, it just doesn't go off and heal on its own. It eats you. Before you see it happen, you're windigo. I wouldn't exactly hold a lot of weight with them. Guess they've never seen a wind ago. Not pretty. You can always try again. Can't save a wind ago. We used to have to cut their heads off. Only way to get rid of evil. No one lets you do that today. <laughs> I felt the power of your spirit flowing through the pipe. The inquest was theirs, but this inquiry would be ours. So why did you stop running when Constable Cross was chasing you? Figuring he had his gun out. Why would you figure that? Okay, like, just before he fell. He fell? Yeah. He wiped out Major. 
He's coming around the corner, right? Police stop, bro. I ran a bit more, and I came to a fence, and I stopped. I didn't want to get shot. And why would you be fearing that? Because he had his gun up. Constable Cross had his gun out while he was running. Yeah. Of course he do. Contrary to Saying they don't. Procedure. Contrary to the various testimony we've heard from all of the officers. Oh, nice. That's I wouldn't know nothing about that. Jesus Christ. Jimmy, Thank give me the phone. So after you stopped, I assume you came down off the fence and turned. Now, please think carefully. Constable Cross was then approaching you with his gun out. Mr. Timchuk, could you describe for us what you saw early in the morning of March the 9th? Uh, I'm a shift supervisor at Varda Batteries. I was driving home from work a bit after 2. I'm going down the lane, and I see this cop run by. So there was no doubt in your mind what the officer was holding? No doubt. He was holding a gun. It was only like a five-foot-long silhouette across the wall. Well, Mr. Timchuk, why did it take you so long to come forward with this evidence? Well, I called the police to tell them what I saw, but they said they'd call me if they needed. And? They never called. Then, watching the hearings, I realized that the cops denied that they ran with their guns out. That's exactly what our witnesses said. Thank you, Mr. Timchuk. Yeah, but ours were all. Into you. Now, the important thing is when the gun came out. Rob, they're going to try and make their case that all our guys were out there running around, weapons drawn, ready to blast away the first Indian they see. Now, it's important that you're clear. Your gun never came out of its holster right up until the time you struggled with Harper, right? Rob? Right. Well, that's how it was. So, yeah. Holster. Gun was in the holster. Seems pretty simple. Yeah, but it's having them believe you. Are you sure you can keep it together up there? I mean, medication's working all right. I mean, if if you're uh, if you're confused, hey, you know, it's as clear as a bell to me. He went for the gun. And the gun went off in the struggle for me to keep control. Of the gun? Yeah. For me to keep control of the gun. Yeah. How do you wink at an Indian? If you're lucky, that Indian dies. That's right, bleed the fucker dry. I'm sorry, th that last one, I don't remember. When, when the anti-shock trousers were placed on Mr. Harper, ironically causing a greater loss of blood through his chest than would otherwise have been the case, one of your colleagues apparently saw the results of this misguided strategy and said, that's, that's, right, right, that's right, bleed the, the fucker, fucker dry. Fucker dry. That's, that's right, that's right, bleed the fucker dry. dry. I imagine it would be highly embarrassing to name the officers that made these remarks. You'd be reluctant to name names. If it was said, I wouldn't be reluctant to name names, no. Well, name one name. I don't remember. <clears throat> See, several people said, said a lot of this stuff to me. Like, I'm no one. The whole force knows me, but that doesn't mean that I know the whole force. So these are just passing statements from officers, casual racist remarks. How do you wink at an Indian? Well, I don't classify that as a racist joke. It, it, it's a kind of gallows humor. It's meant to lighten the load for me, maybe a feeling of sympathy. How about um, Harper was the author of his own demise? 
I never said that. I believe you said you might have said it earlier in the questioning. I, I might have said it, yes. I... You might have said it. You might have made the remark about the liquor store. You don't remember who said, if you're lucky, that Indian died. I'm sorry. Um, to be quite honest, I, I'm getting quite confused. You, know, you keep asking me the same question over and over, and I'm losing track of what's going on. Well, you'd expect the same answer to the same question. So, on cross, hold up. Well, could have been worse. At least you stay consistent. Had to carry him out in a basket. So you survived. Yeah, I don't know. Made the list. Calling me in to testify this week. Who requested the Indians? Lawyer for the city. Thought I could help clarify. <sighs> well, where to now? Isaac's up. He's about as solid as they come. Good luck. My notes you made these at the time I am um, I have two sets one that was made at the time and one that was made sometime after why two after the shooting I prepared a supplemental report based on my first set of notes and at that time several minor errors were pointed out to me how minor a street address 2047 Gallagher as opposed to 2037 and that I had the suspect's jacket as gray as opposed to black. But the jacket was gray. But the broadcast said that it was black. So I must I must have gotten mixed up when I uh, when I saw that it was gray and then I wrote that. Which notes did you use at the inquest? The revised. Was your counsel aware of this? No. But then, neither was I. Could you elaborate, please? I had forgotten that I'd recopied the notes, and it was not until I rediscovered the originals. And when was that? Four days ago. At which point you did what? First of all, explain the situation to my family. And early the next morning, I offered to resign. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would like to apologize for this mistake and for any problems it may cause the court. I may ask. Officer, um, you said several minor errors were pointed out to you. Do you remember who pointed them out? No, I can't recall that. Did anyone ever suggest to you that you clarify or make changes to your notes? A colleague? A superior? No, sir. No, I know for a fact that nobody would, would do that. You figure you know a guy, eh? And then out of nowhere... <laughs> uh, Isaac's a good cop. He's just... He's just never been up there, I guess, you know? Listen, Kenny. You took care of your boys. I mean... Who knows? Maybe some things will get learned. <laughs> Hope the hell would wake up the chief. Yeah. Um, you want another one? Uh, no, I'm done. 
and I should be getting home. You, uh, feeling okay about testifying tomorrow? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just, uh, just, uh, telling the truth. That's what they want, eh? Just don't get all of us fired. <laughs> I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no way Isaac's changed those notes on his own. He's too honest for that. You think he's covering for someone? That's my guess, yeah. His partner? Or Stevens? I don't know. We'll see what his boss says this afternoon. Couple more liars to go. Go get him, Harvey. Sergeant Osepchuk, you took Constable Cross's statement following the shooting. That's correct, sir. And who were the senior officers with regards to this investigation that had decision-making power? In our division, Acting Inspector Ken Dawson. And I believe we will be hearing from him. I believe so, sir. I guess the first question everyone is going to ask is why. To anyone who really knows me, the answer should be obvious. They will never be satisfied until they have their pound of flesh. So I'll be the sacrifice. I was the one in charge, and I was responsible. Maybe God has a place in heaven for cops. Nobody else understands us. Don't forget to print the gun. Mr. Wood, Mr. Wood, can I speak to you? What's your reaction to Inspector Dawson's suicide? You think I'm happy that another man died? That we're even? That's not what anyone wanted. That's not what JJ would have wanted. But if my brother and that cop had to die so people finally listened to us, then that's the way it has to be. Come on, Harry. This tragedy is under intense investigation. 
It would be premature to speculate whether Inspector Dowson's pending appearance before the inquiry had any influence on this terrible event. Chief, was Inspector Dowson seen as particularly vulnerable for his role in the J.J. Harper investigation? Should this inquiry persist much longer, it's entirely possible there may be more victims. Then you do draw a correlation between the inquiry and the suicide? Absolutely. It was definitely caused by the inquiry. <laughs> Did you not just a moment ago say that it was premature to speculate? Yes. After Isaac's confession and Dowson's suicide, there wasn't much more for the cops to say. He can't save a Wendigo. The inquiry passed on to other matters. We'd have to wait for the judge's report to find out if the results were worth the terrible price paid by so many people. The justice system has failed Manitoba's Aboriginal people on a massive scale. It has been insensitive and inaccessible. In the case of the death of John Joseph Harper, we find that the final investigative responsibility lay with Chief Herb Stephen. He did not assume his responsibility. The AJI report ran to a thousand pages and covered the whole of the Aboriginal experience with the justice system and went on to blame it on racism and the conditions we have to live in. You'd have loved it. Sure as hell, you weren't just one more dead Indian now. It's been a long journey, Harry. Ross's Wendigo never left him. Eventually, he cut off his own head with alcohol. say, Joe. Just tell him we did the best we could. JJ, we did the best we could. He says bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 